Hey, this is Brandon from Event Horizon Services. Do you play an electric guitar and have always wondered what's going on with its tone or its sound? We're going to dive in deep into this topic and cover three different points. First one is input and output impedance. Next, wire size. And the last one is balance wires. Now, this is a three part video because a lot of topic to cover. So stick with us and I think you'll learn something. Guitar connections have always been a troublesome thing. They can have loss, tone issues, noise, etc. You'd almost say guitar rigs are traditionally where logic breaks down and voodoo takes over. Okay, not quite, but let me continue. There are many beliefs I've heard over the years, like maximum cable length of 20 feet, use super heavy duty cable, don't use balance cable, etc. But in the end, few people bring fact to these theories. To add to the mystery, there are a great many guitar and amp manufacturers that do not provide real specs, and instead sell on reputation. As this video will show, even just basic specs are very important. Without specs, you'll have to guess what might be the result, and without specs, you can't explain why one setup sounds better than another. If you've ever used a microphone, you might know that you can run the signal a very long way with very little loss and noise. Microphones are low impedance. Most standard guitars and related equipment are high impedance. So we're going to take a look at the impedance issue and see what role it plays. So now it's time to dive in and learn something. In today's video, we're going to look at high impedance and low impedance and the effects that cables have with them. I have done simulated tests and real world tests to demonstrate the effects and the results are interesting. Before I get started, we first need to get some definitions out of the way. Okay, first, what is impedance? This is a complicated topic and worthy of its own video, but I am going to keep this simple for now. I started to give the textbook definition here, but I don't think it helps, so I'm going to put it in layman's terms. But before I do that, I really first need to define resistance. In electrical terms, it's a difficulty of electrons to flow through an object or a circuit. Anything that is not a perfect conductor has resistance. Without resistance, everything would be a short circuit and electricity wouldn't work as we know it. So impedance is basically frequency dependent resistance or resistance in an alternating current circuit like audio. So impedance is the difficulty of electrons to flow through a conductor with an AC or alternating current. Impedance can vary with the frequency of the signal Resistance is measured with DC, or a zero frequency, while impedance is measured at a frequency and can vary with the frequency of the signal. The ohm is the unit of measure for resistance and impedance. Every input and output circuit has impedance. A typical mic might have an impedance of 150 to 300 ohms. Many audio outs have an impedance of 50 to 200 ohms. Many audio inputs have impedance of 10,000 ohms to 20,000 ohms. All these I mentioned would be considered low Z connections. A guitar might have an impedance of 50,000 ohms and a guitar amp an input of 1 million ohms. Also through this video is the abbreviation K. K is for kilo or 1,000. So if something is said to be 1K ohms, that would be 1,000 ohms, and 50k ohms would be 50,000 ohms. Same with frequency. 2.5k hertz would be a frequency of 2,500 hertz. We also use mega, which means million, so 1 mega ohm would be 1 million ohms. One last definition to get out of the way is capacitance. Capacitance is the ability of a device to store an electric charge. This is most often seen with electronic parts called capacitors that store electricity that can be released when needed. The unit of measure is the farad, but most often you'll find microfarad and picofarad references because one farad measurement is quite large. 
capacitance comes into play because wire has capacitance between the conductors and that can affect the audio you're running through it. All right, I hope I still have you. This is where we get back to the fun part. Back to guitar troubles, fun being relative. So the first question is, where is the problem coming from? So I decided to make a simulation of a circuit in an electronic program. I'll keep the explanation really simple. On the left side is a simple audio source, like a guitar or mixer out. I can change the output impedance with the output resistor, R1, which is currently showing 100 ohms. In the middle, I have a simple representation of a cable. R2 represents the resistance down the length of the cable, and C1, the capacitance of the cable. On the right, a simple input circuit that I can change the input impedance on with R5. With this circuit, I can simulate different pieces of gear and different cables. When I do tests, I like to push things to the limit so that all the effects are exaggerated. So I have first entered the numbers for 50 feet of Megami 2524, our high-end instrument cable. We sell a lot of this guitar cable. At 50 feet, it has a resistance on the center conductor of 0.5 ohms and a capacitance of 1,985 picofarad. For a baseline, I'm going to do a 100 ohm output impedance and 10K ohm input impedance. This is a typical low Z circuit. The red line near the one volt mark is the plot of the response. Across the width of the chart is from one hertz to 200 kilohertz. And vertically, it is showing us the voltage response, not decibels. What this shows is that it gives us an almost flat response up to 200 kilohertz. This is what we would hope for in a cable. You want a flat response to not have your cable affect your audio. Test two, we are going to increase the input impedance, R5, to one mega ohm, which is comparable to many guitar amp inputs. Now looking at the results, we see no real problems. This is the green line on the chart. The red line is a control test from before. They're about the same results. The result is a bit higher because it puts less load on the output source. Okay, now let's increase output impedance on R1 to 50 kilo ohms impedance, as you might find in a guitar. Wow, this one is the blue line. The red and the green are still on for reference. It has a bit lower signal because of the higher impedance, but it starts dropping off about 80 hertz with major roll off at about one kilohertz. At this point, you'd certainly be hearing loss of the highs if this was real. So what this shows is the problem with the signal comes from the impedance of the output, which would be the guitar, and that the input has little bearing on the tone of the cable. Now let's do a real simulation. What is a real simulation, you might ask? Well, let me explain. I still want a way to control the variables to test more like the computer test. Let me explain the setup and it might make sense. This setup consists of a computer-based spectral analyzer, software to record the data and show the frequency response of something I'm testing. It is paired with a high-end sound card and feeding out the high-end sound card a swept signal to a transformer isolation box. Then I have built dummy loads to simulate different input and output impedances. Signal then feeds into a preamp and back to the high-end sound card in the computer. This is a similar graph as before, but with it going from 3 Hz to 22 kHz across the width, and now it is dB on the vertical axis instead of volts. Again, we don't care about the specific result, we care about the difference in results. As you can see, there is some waviness between 40 and 700 Hz. It seems to mostly be from the preamp that I think it was overloading a bit, but like I said, it doesn't matter. The test was done with real Megami 2524 wire like we simulated before. Here are the results of the two baseline tests which are in blue and red. These are both with 110 ohm output impedance to the guitar input on the pre with a 1 mega ohm input impedance. The red line is 1 foot of Megami 2524 and the blue line is 50 feet. As you can see they are basically on top of each other for most of the response. Now we look at the green line. This is one foot and the output impedance has been increased to 50 kilo ohms. 
It is right on till the 600 to 700 hertz range, where it drops a little and rolls off more starting at 7 kilohertz. At 10 kilohertz, it is about 0.2 dB down, not very much. The white line is 50 feet of the 2524 cable with the same output impedance of 50 kilo ohms. It has quite a drastic drop, but is very similar to the computer simulation. It starts to roll off about 500 hertz, and at 10,000 hertz, it looks like it's about 15 dB down. So you would certainly be hearing loss of highs with this one. So the computer circuit simulation showed a high impedance output will lead to more roll off with a longer cable. And the simulation confirmed that. Now there's one more test I'd like to do to make the point. It is the real world test. This is where it gets fun for me. I am not a guitar player, so I can't just play a tune, record it, and play it again with a longer cable. Actually, to do these tests, I went out and purchased a guitar because I didn't have one. So meet my pawn shop special purchase, a Fender Square Bullet. Main thing I was looking for is a simple basic guitar, no electronics, just pickups and knobs, and a switch. I'll be using the center pickup with the volume all the way up and the tones to flat or full. Perhaps most importantly, we need to know what impedance we are testing, so I made a rough impedance plot. As you can see, it peaks out at 5 kHz at about 78,500 ohms. How that plot exactly affects our frequency response is a topic of another day, because we are working on comparisons, not the exact frequency. I also ran a plot of the Art Tube MP Pre I am using. The spec rates it for a 1 mega ohm input impedance, but my results did not come close. But that is low on my concerns since the input impedance is not affecting the test. It is possible my testing is off too. I will look into that in the future. As I said, I'm not a guitar player and I need to get consistent, repeatable results so I'm not playing the guitar. Plus, I need full frequency plots to show the changes. Electric guitars basically work by the movement of the strings creating a varying magnetic field in the coil that creates an electrical current that can be amplified. I am, for this test, bypassing the strings and creating an electromagnet that I have placed directly over the pickup. I can then feed the electromagnet any audio signal which is induced in the pickups just like the strings normally do. This gives new meaning to playing a tune on a guitar. For the test, I run a sweep signal through the pickup just like I did in the simulated test before. So again, we're not looking at a specific line, but the difference between the two. The red line is one foot cable, and we use it as our baseline. It's obviously not flat. That is either the electromagnet I made or the interaction between the magnet and the pickup, but it doesn't really matter. The green line is what we care about. It is the 50 foot of the Megami 2524 wire. It shows quite a bit of loss at 10K, about 16 to 17 dB down, just like the other tests, but it also shows a bump about 2.5 kilohertz. I would say that is effect of something beyond the scope of the topic we're covering now. For those of you that say, that proves nothing, that's a weird way to do a test, well here you go. Here's a signal strumming the guitar as consistently as I can. The blue line is a 50 foot cable and the white line is a 1 foot cable. It is right on to the previous results. Yes, there are level differences, but we are comparing the frequency differences, not the actual levels, so it looks right on to me. Let me zoom in so you can see that better. Here to zoom from 1K to 22K in a lesser dB range. The green line would be considered equal to the blue line and are both the 50 foot cables and the red line would be considered equal to the white line in both one foot cables. You can see the bump at about 2.5 kilohertz on the blue line, same as the green line. You can also see the bump on the white line and the red line matches up too. All right, one more case to make the point. As I said, I'm not a guitar player, but here are two 10 second audio clips of me just strumming the guitar. FYI, I haven't tuned it in a while, and I'm not expecting to get any record deals. I will play the clips, and you can listen, and I'll tell you which one was which at the end, if you can't figure it out. All right.
right, you think you know? Clip one was the one foot cable and clip two was the 50 foot cable. You certainly can hear the tonal differences. The conclusion of this test shows us two things. You are better off with a lower impedance output and that if you have a higher impedance output, the longer you run the cable, the more high end you will lose with little or no change in the low end. Addendum to this section. After completing this section, it caught my attention that I did not give much comparison for input impedance other than low and high. So a quick addendum to this topic is this graph. All these are with 50 kilo ohm output impedance and 50 feet of 2319 wire simulated. Why 2319 wire and not 2524? Honestly, I have no idea. It was just what I did when I made the graph. The green line on top is one mega ohm input impedance. The blue line in the middle is 100 kilo ohm input impedance. The brown line on the bottom is 50 kilo ohm input impedance. The starting roll off is slightly better with lower impedance, but by 10 kilohertz, they are all about the same. With a lower impedance, it also loads the output more and you'll have a lower signal to start off with. This wraps up part one. In part two, we'll look at wire size.